Hi, Crafty Patty here. I had a request to see if I had a macrame skeleton pattern. I didn't, but I do now. I got creative and this is what I came up with. So now you can make a macrame skeleton for your Halloween. So stay tuned, step-by-step -step instructions to come. So the first thing we need is a base to add our cording to to make the macrame skeleton. I tried making one with 20 gauge wire but it's just not strong enough. But this is the shape we're after and that's approximately the same size as an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. So I'm going to try using a coat hanger and I'm going to see if I can bend this into the desirable shape close enough to this shape that it will work. So I've added 10 cords all together. There's five on each side. We'll take the four middle cords and start our first square knot. If you need to know more explanation on how to tie these knots, you can certainly go to my how to do macrame knots and there's lots of tutorials there as well. So I won't take each knot and do it really slowly, but that's your first square knot. When you get to your sides and your last four cords for your knot here, take your one cord and put it behind your wire frame and now form your square knot. That will just help to secure the macrame so it's all holding together. Gonna do one square knot in the middle. Leave these two strands out. I'm gonna use this as my base cord to come up and make double half hitches. So here's my first one over and through. Now I'm going to take this knot and add it to my base cord because I want this to be a hole for the eye. So now I'm going to go over two of them. I'm 
add it to your base cards. Come around with the next one. And now you're going over three cords. We'll do the same on the other side. And we should have four left over in the middle. Now we're going to alternate in the middle again here. There's our four middle cords. Take two and take two from this grouping. Make another square knot. And back into the middle. So we should have four cords left over on each side. Those are the last square knots that we did. And we're going to use these to form the bottom part of our eye. Now I'm going to show you how I created the eye on this side. So we'll repeat it on this side. Take one of your cords, this is going to be your base cord. And now we're going to form lark's heads, but you could call this a vertical lark's head if you like. So this time we're going to go over the cord and pull it through the hole. Now we're going behind and through the hole. And it looks the same as above here, but we're just doing it with one cord to form that lark's head. Bring this cord to the top, find another cord that's going to go behind that cord, and now we're going to form another one. This is our base cord again, over, under, there's two of them, find another cord, come behind, over, under. And to tie that off, we're going to come up, we're going to attach it, bring these two, and use these two for squaring up. But first, tuck this one in behind your wire frame so it keeps it secure and holds it to the outer edge and make your square knot. So we've got some loose strands back in here, which are tucked away, which is fine, but just this is to secure them even more, I'm going to take my two center cords 
and I'm going to slide those through all of them before I do my square knot. And that's brought them all to the forward and it's keeping them out of the center of the eye so they don't come up into the eye here. Now for more formation of the nose, we're going to do some double half hitches again. So we're going to have two for our base cord and then we'll come through with our left cord there. Two base cords and go behind and over. over and through. So we'll just fill this in. So I'll do a square knot on the side. Tuck this one in behind the middle frame just so it keeps it tight to that middle frame again. One more square knot. Now up on the side, make one more square knot. And now to keep it attached to this frame, I'm going to take this metal cord and drop it in behind and just form my next square knot. bring these four cords, follow the frame shaping. I'm going to bring this cord over and make the half hitches and bring it all together. So there's the first part. Go over again. We're going over the wire frame and all four cords. And I'm going to do that one more time. And we're going to take these two middle cords, one on the right and the left, to make a square knot. Half hitches into the center, take your far left, will be your base cord, and start doing your half hitches.
There's the first chord. And continue into the center. And the same on the other side, half inches towards the center. some square knots on the side here. I'm just going to tuck one of these in behind. So it keeps it secured to the frame. Now I'm going to come back with double half inches into the center. Cross these ones over. I'm going to bring this one to this side just so it keeps it secure. Sorry, I decided I didn't like that because it makes it look like his teeth are crossed. So let's just undo that last one on both sides. As you've heard me say a zillion times, they design as they go and that didn't work. So let's go back to this side. Now I'm going to attach this one to the frame. So again, I'm going to tuck the second one behind the frame and we'll do another square knot. Just do an alternating one here. Do one more square knot on this side. We're going left over the center cords, right over, behind, and through. Cinch that up. Now we're doing right, over, left over, behind, and through. Now just come in and pull down on all of your cords. And we'll do one more square knot. So 
some of the cords are getting a bit shorter, so I've come in and I'm finding two of my longer cords so I can make a few more square knots to finish off the neck. I'm going to be using a 5 inch by 36 inch piece of wood dowel or 1.27 centimeters by 91 centimeters and I'm going to cut it down to 24 inches. So I've added my 12 strands here, and just to keep it spread apart like this nicely, I'm gonna go back in and on the ones that I've got a little bit of length for my cord, I'm gonna choose those ones and come back in and make another double half hitch in between some of these, just to fill up the, the doweling, to hide the doweling as well as keep it spread out. And of course that was an afterthought. It would have been probably a little easier if you had just done a couple half inches with each strand while you were there, but designing as I go makes it a little bit more complicated. And I didn't want to take them all out and start again, so there we go. I'm going to tie all these together with a square knot just to hold them all into the middle to form a spine. Just cinch that up and pull down on all your cords. Now we're going to start our ribs. So cut two pieces of cord at four feet long. We're going to add them with a lark's head knot. We're going to keep one end shorter by about 13 inches, the other end longer. So bring those around, form your lark's head. So this strand here, you want it to come down about 13 inches because the outside cords are going to work out to be about the same length. So again, keeping the shorter one to the inside. Another lark's head. And now we're going to make seven square knots. I'm going to make one more square knot here and as I have, you probably do too, have some shorter ends. That's why we're tucking them all into the center spine here. Find two longer cords and work one more square knot. Now we can bring your rib into the middle here. So we're going to attach this with a square knot. Bring all your cords down. Bring those long cords again now and we're going to bring all this again into a square knot. Tie one more square knot. Now I've cut the next strands at five feet long and do the same as we did for the first one with making your inside cord shorter. And bring your two sentence together with a square knot. Okay. 
find two long cords in the back again and square knot Push them through the hole, find the loop, bring it through and just tuck those strands to the back. Now leave a one inch drop before you tie your first square knot so you've got space where we can add our next cords for our next level. And now make 12 square knots. Now bring your two together. And tie your square knot. Two longer cords. Now we're cutting the next cords at seven feet. Tuck them into the space that we left on this previous row. Bring them through and then we're going to make one a shorter so just pull on the other strand. Poke your other strands through. Bring them through the loop and then have your Inside cord come down to about 20 inches. Leave a space and do 11 more square knots and tie them together again with a square knot. And find your two longest cords again from your middle grouping and form your square knot. Bring in your second cord, pop them through the loop, and your inside cord is going to be your 20 inches measured up for your other one. And again, together with a square knot. Find two long pieces from your middle section. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to do one square knot on this one. So I'm just going to take these cords and tie a knot onto the back. Just a basic knot just to secure it. Now for this row, cut a piece of cording that is now 12 feet long. Again, put it into the space that you left. Bring it through your loop. Now we will be doing lark's head knots with two strands. This will be our base cord. And now we're going to come over and through and under and through. Again, over and through. under and through. So just keep going over and under, over and under, and you'll create your lock set with the bump on the bottom. And again, join the two together, square knot. We're going to be bringing this one right up close to the other one and take your two strands that you just made your lark says heads with and again we're going to go around with a square knot down your cords. Now cut a piece that's 12 feet long. Find your end. So that's in the middle. Pull the other side out and we'll make a square knot here. Now tuck your ends to the inside of that loop and we're going to make some square knots to finish off the spine. Now split all these approximately in half. I'm not going to try to count them. Approximation is fine. Now we're going to finish off the leg portion with a ball joint. And so first thing, just pull down on all your cords first. Make sure they're all right down to the bottom. Now take some good scissors and you're going to trim these close to the top, about a quarter inch away. This one here that's attached to the knot I'm going to leave this a bit longer and I'm going to pull that through the ball. So I'm going to take a piece of scotch tape, wrap it around this end just to make a nice point. Because so we're going to be pulling it through the ball joint. 
find the center. I'm going to wrap this around and just tie a square knot right over to the tops of those cut ends we just cut. Make a nice tight knot there. I found this at the thrift store. <laughs> I don't know the name of it, but it's this really pretty cool tool. And it's working great to drill holes in the styrofoam balls. But if you don't obviously have one of these, then just get a large drill bit and then place it into your ball and just start drilling a hole and work out the center of your ball. I'm just gonna go to the kitchen so I can let all these little bits fall into the garbage. I'll be right back. So now I've got a hole through the center of my styrofoam ball and I believe these are three inch balls. So I'm gonna use some Gorilla Glue, but feel free to use any glue, household all-purpose glue. I'm just going to use this to actually add to the bottom of our cut end so it doesn't unravel anymore. Now I'm going to take all of my three loose ends and pop it through the hole. And then just really yank on it to get it to come right up to the top there. That one that we had cut, or the one that was just a little bit longer, I'm just going to pull on that quite tight and then cut that off and then it'll come back up into the ball again. And then I'm going to take my ends and do just a basic knot or square knot, whatever, doesn't really matter. That will keep the ball secure. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up onto the top here. I'm going to surround this with glue. Now I'm going to tie a knot about a foot down, just a basic knot. I'm going to pick up one of my scraps that I just finished cutting off. And we're going to attach that to the ends here. And I'm going to just tie a knot in the middle of each one of these. It just makes it look a little bit more creepy. I've been using up every last bit of corning I've got. So I'm just filling in this with a scrap piece. Just going to back it this way and then come back and wrap around so that secures that little piece in there. The tape for now just so I don't lose my wrap long. And so I've used up absolutely almost every piece of cording. There's not much left over. Tie this piece onto the end here and I'm gonna stuff it into the ball. I'm gonna come down about a foot down and just tie a basic knot. And again, on the bottom of the cords, tie another knot. And one of my last scraps, tie that onto the end here. 